You don't have to be very old to remember taking bottles back to the store for deposit money. The kids used to pay for a lot of Saturday movies and popcorn with the money they'd get. But a funny thing happened. The people who manufacture all kinds of drinks decided Americans should just throw the containers away instead of returning them. Well, by the late 1960s, Oregon legislators were talking about a return to returnables. Legislation that would include deposits on both beer and soft drink containers, while at the same time outlawing pull tabs on cans. At first, Tom McCall opposed the bill, though not vigorously. However, by 1971, Tom McCall became one of the bill's strongest advocates. Then came the thought that if you had throwaways, you being the brewers, you being the pop bottlers, you wouldn't have to be responsible for the logistics of taking these bottles back and sending them and washing them. And therefore, you could grow bigger and bigger. You wouldn't have to have your presence in every region or every state or every town to handle the bottles. So the ultimate of that would be, Paul, that you would have one brewery, maybe in the center of the United States, and one pop bottler, and you'd bombard the United States with 400 billion cans and bottles a year with no responsibility. At the height of the campaign to get the bottle bill approved, businessman John Passantini offered a half a penny for every container returned to his convenience stores. Our stores were buried with containers, and there was no way for customers to get into our parking lots. And he called the National Guard out to pick up the containers. A lot of people objected to the fact that he would have the National Guard help us, but he felt that he didn't care the heck with it. They were, he was going to do it anyway and let them sue if they want. They lost 36,000 jobs. They lost more than, oh, two, three quarters of the uh, breweries in the United States. They cut down the mom and pop bottlers, the most ruthless attack on small business in history. And yet they cried when we wanted to bring in the bottle. They all think what's going to happen to jobs. Oregon's then Attorney General, Lee Johnson, says the bottle bill's opponents helped get the bill passed. They had no conception of attitudes in Oregon. And, uh, uh, and they, they tried to use a lot of, of uh, arm-twisting techniques that just do not uh, get it anyway, uh, just create an opposite reaction. The night before the Senate vote, I was offered the bribe of $5,000 by a now deceased uh, lobbyist for organized labor who was, a, who was uh, uh, representing, uh, to me, uh, the Glass Institute or whatever the hell it was. When I debated the bottle bill less than three years ago in front of the Cleveland City Club, the vice president of the Continental Can Company turned on me and said, don't you ever foist the Luddite ways of the people of Oregon on the people of Ohio. And he was a native of Ohio as he booed in his own state. Since the passage, though, Tom McCall has single-handedly, not single-handedly, but together with Hatfield and other people, helped that bill from being defamed nationally, which was the whole purpose of the Glass Institute and these other guys who want to knock it in the head, and has tried to carry the message to other states not very successfully, which, which I don't, as we haven't been able to do in land use planning. One of the main uh, reasons we're penalized in the boardrooms of corporations that like to badmouth us is the bottle bill. There's not as much litter along Oregon's roads and highways since they passed the bottle bill. It saves energy. It creates jobs. Now, as we mentioned, Oregonians are still debating the wisdom of land use planning, but they tend to tell pollsters they support the returnable concept by more than 90% margins. Because of Tom McCall's in-person testimony, some other states have adopted bottle bills. But Congress, under intense pressure from the same folks who battled Oregon's bottle bill, have been using their profits and political powers to block similar federal legislation. Apparently, the decision was made that, OK, we'll go on the basis that if it works in Oregon, by God, it won't work anywhere else. Why, do you know what they are up there? They're nothing but a bunch of, a bunch of woodsy weirdos. That's what they that, say about Oregon. That's what I've had spread at me.